So this is the Monday, August 30th meeting of the Conway Select Board. First item on the agenda, approve the minutes of August 6th. So we read them? Yeah, they were shorter than I expected. Um, so was the meeting. But so was the meeting, you're right, that's right. So no, they were good. Yeah, actually, the meeting was August 16th. The agenda it says the 6th, but the meeting was August 16th. So uh, make a motion to approve the minutes of August 16th. Second. Okay. Aye. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, I mean, I heard a second. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's good. Yes. For warrants, we have accounts payable warrant 22 to 06 for $130,367.04. Payroll warrant $6,220.44. Payroll deductions warrant $23,480.38. Yeah. Any questions about any of those? No, I move no. that we approve the warrant. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Meetings attended by select board members. No. <laughs> we had a lot of conservation commission yes. meetings once again. You all driving around town. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 there's a lot going on. And some of it, I think, is um, people who are choosing not to sell their home and they're doing repairs or building on their home. And some of them are just, and then some of them are like next amp. And, and the, the tower, you know, down on the Deerfield border. But so there's a lot going on for the conservation. That was it. So those are all site visits and our meeting. Uh, yes, I, I unfortunately was a participant in the joint uh, school committee uh, boards of health five town that was the subject of the front page article the following day. Um, the court called it testy and contentious. <laughs> Those were understatements of the year. Um, it was just truly, truly unpleasant. Um, the only, the, 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 I'll, I'll say just, I'll try to just say what the positive things. It's really neat that 300 people care that much about their kids that they are willing to put time into a public meeting. <laughs> um, but, and that of the uh, of the hundred or so speakers, um, the two that were from Conway were remarkable for their uh, oh I don't know just civility. There was one pro mask, one against mandatory mask for for just their good nonpartisanship, their civility, just the making their comments, making their points, um, and 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 they were like the only two that were like that. Um, and so for for the residents of Deerfield and Sunderland and Waitley that were participating, the things that were coming out of their mouths, the intentional insults, the attempts to be hurtful, the attempts to, the, the attempts to disrupt um, were just staggering to me. Just because, you know, if, if we can't disagree without being disagreeable, then civil society can't function. Ooh, that's happening and it's time. just amazing like you don't you don't yeah so but it, it was it was truly true truly truly traumatic for those of us um the, uh, you know and then the other thing if you know you're, you're talking about making a decision when you have all the school committees involved that's 27 people at all the boards of health that's another 20 um it's 47 elected officials cannot make you can't you can't do anything in a meeting, you, 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 whatever. And so, so the discussion at the end of it about what to do was uh, destined to be exactly as uh, disjointed and not, you know, useless as it was. So, uh, yeah, the whole thing was just, hmm. like, yeah, yeah, just these guys coming in to take a new school committee spot wants to take two <laughs> spots at once because that was almost it for me. I, I, I was this close.
turning the camera off and saying, um, okay, public comments. We have no public. Well, there's somebody on the Zoom. I don't know if that's somebody who wishes to comment or somebody who's here. Deb, is that? Who is Deb? Ah, this is Deb, uh, Deb Donaldson. I, I understood that Beth was coming to talk about um, invasive control. So I'm just checking in to see what she does. She's, she's not due till 6.45. Okay, I thought it was but before that. <laughs> you're welcome to hang out until then. Okay, I'll check back in then. Okay. No old business? No old business. No old business. It seems like I mean, I actually, you know, just to, I could talk, also talk about this during um, select board comments, but just going back to the grants to the grants that we used um, to pay for the playground. So we'll have something on the agenda for next time, but just to give you a heads up. So um, we found out that there's a use for those grants at the school amongst Conway families that, uh, that have disa disabled kids and that specifically health insurance companies pay for one pair of eyeglasses per calendar year. Kids in wheelchairs need a lot of time more than one pair of eyeglasses. So, so the suggestion is that as the principal identifies like a kid that needs, you know, like similarly situated kid that needs like a specific item like that, and she's tart, she has in mind about 10 Conway families in total, that we could do a micro grant process without like the whole because that you remember that's really what those what those things are for and so like the germane fund like yeah. the germane fund yeah. and yeah. um yes so so it would make the perfect use of those funds and in a way that doesn't require a whole song and dance like it's a major major thing so great just yeah so which is a nice thing i think because that's really a you can really help a lot of with those mm -hmm. micro grants. Yeah. Well, we keep yeah. money out through the drain fund that way, and I didn't think it was that big a process. But, uh, no, it's not, but it's still like the, 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 the designation of the principal to act in, on our behalf uh, with, with small amounts and just furnish the written proof is like what I was trying to see. And so that it can just get done and like because it's needed. Yeah. And, um, and, and we're talking relatively small amounts. So, yeah, which is, and those things are just all about yeah, helping the handicapped children. Not the town. Yeah. It's just what, you know, it's, so. Um, I thought you were going to say we're, so we're going to transfer money from that grant. No, 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 no. No, no, no it's just, that was for it, all. It's just a way to use them in a way that's necessary, but then, but not like we don't have a process for that. Yeah. Future business. Okay. Future business. But it was old business because we did it not that long ago. Yeah. So um, we'll go through some of the new, new business that we could do right now. Can appoint Carol Baldwin. She's not coming right. That's right. So it's Carol Baldwin is Conway Current's fifth committee member for a three-year term ending June 30th, 2024, and approved staggered terms for the rest of the committee members. That's non-controversial. I like the idea of staggering around town at night. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I don't know, Carol, but yes. yes. Uh, I mean, I'm happy to What's stick the, to it. Uh, I'm willing so, to so, say thank you very much. I know. I'm yeah, just happy yeah, yeah. that anyone wants to. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. If you want me to speak to it. As sure. This is the staggered terms. Well, um, first, Carol did attend our last newsletter committee meeting, and that's, you know, when we very appreciatively um, accepted her um, willingness to join as a fifth member, which um, I know. Um, it's not a bad idea, just not that there's anything contentious going on there, but if you have a vote and it's two to two, you're in trouble. So yeah, yeah. it was thought a good idea to have a fifth member. And so for staggering the terms, what I proposed was that um, my term end in 22, 
that, um, so let me back up. Everybody was appointed for three year terms, 2020 to 2023. So I've shortened mine by a year. Um, Pat Lynch and um, uh, Kathy Lamas would stay as the regular 23. Louise would be extended to 24, and then Carol coming in would be 24. So we'd have our spread. Great. So I move that we appoint Carol Baldwin for a three year term ending in 2024. And the, and the rest of the staggered terms as set forth by the town administrator. Yeah. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, yeah. Do you know if Jared's coming in? He said he was available. I'm not sure whether that was going to be in person or whether it's going yeah. to be. Yeah, I don't think that's coming across. Is it? Do you know? <laughs> um, I do. I hear somebody well. call, yeah. so maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he wasn't thinking you couldn't come. And as much as we play darts and pool together. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> you know, and that, and that. Good recommendation. Yeah, I know. No, they have four kids. It's like, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I have four kids. He has four kids. Like, yeah. <laughs> He's a good guy. All right. But, yeah. Um. Move to approve the Board of Health to accept gifts and grants for repairs and maintenance of the Conway Mall. Hello. Oh, this is a Society, right? This is. All right. This is. Oh, sorry about that. Um, yeah. I'm being right in the way, but please. Oh, sure. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, sorry, I didn't hear how that ended up. Uh, we're putting just, off the floor. Oh, yeah, we'll get to it. In, okay, great. Um, but we have a couple things since, since we now have guests, honor guests, residents. Um, Jared Dillon. Uh, so I'm Phil Cantor. I'm also on the committee. Although I have not been enjoying the big front page the newspaper for their testiness. We play pool and darts together at the Conway End. <laughs> Any so, basketball <laughs> See, very rarely. All right, oh, this is the best candidate for school in <laughs> years. <laughs> um, cool. So, um, yeah, so th there was, uh, you're up for a one year, to fill one year of a three year term that ends 6 30, 22. I, yeah, I had a conversation with Darius today. He explained this to me. It was um, uh, Ashley Dion. Is that? Oh, yeah. Ashley. Yeah, so she had resign, I guess. Okay. And so, but my understanding was that you couldn't appoint this for three years. So the way Darius explained it to me, you would be appointing through the end of this fiscal year, then that position would go to election for another two years. All right. Well, so you're just, it's a one year deal, but you're expected, <laughs> you're expected to put your name in for the, well, you don't have, we'll put your name in for you. Yeah, yeah, we will. <laughs> um, but you have to run again. So, um, so I move that we appoint Jerry Campbell to um, the grammar school committee. I'll second that. And uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Come highly recommended by the principal. And uh, so that's good. Yeah, no, and because um, and I was supposed to ask you, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, but I can tell you a little bit about you already. So. Four kids in the school? Four kids in the school system, three in Conway, still one. You know. Right. know the school well. Know the school well. Mm -hmm. My wife is in school. Very good. 
Great. Very good. All right. Thank you. Thank for you for your easy. service. I think you have something to sign at some point. You have to come in and sign something. Okay. Um, you just got to take it. Yeah, a letter okay. will be sent okay. to you. Yeah. You got to take your state online the ethics test. Yes. <laughs> if you spend more than well, 10 minutes on it, then you're making mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> they don't let you fail. Don't they they don't. But. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Guys. Thank you Thanks. For Historical Society and Historical Commission to discuss the potential donation of the McLeish Writing College property. So, which course you're in? So, we thought we might have been coming. Right. Representing the commission because Sarah can't make it. So, Bill might come. He hasn't shown, so I guess he's not. But George is going to be appointed part of the commission, right? Yeah, point. there's a plan for me to become a non voting alternate so that I can represent the commission historical society in a stone house project. So I guess if Bill doesn't show up, I could speak on behalf of the commission to some degree, even though you all haven't appointed me yet. He's become kind of the point person on this project. It's kind of like me. You're the basketball men's basketball. Oh, I am We're so back. sorry, everyone. I have no idea what happened. Suddenly I lost the connection, but at least we're all still here. <laughs> so, okay, we're back to the McLeese Stone Writing College. And we're about to start telling us about right, one so of the plans. And, and we're finishing. So, George is probably going to be appointed by the commission to be uh, liaison. Sort. And I'm the current president of the Historical Society. That guy's old job. Um, and we're, we're trying to come together and work as two organizations, as one to get this project off the ground. Um, but the, the plan is for the town to actually take control of the property through the commission. Um, 
the current owners are willing to essentially give the property to the town. It could be a lease to start with for one dollar. Something like that has to be some yeah. token amount. And then when they die or when they sell the, their other property, it would immediately go to the town. The current owners are the singulars who own the McLean yeah. house? It's not the singulars. It's oh. the bloomers who are in Downdale. Oh, oh, I so see. So it's not part of. I see. Right, that was split off when the Beach State was split up and yeah. given to yeah. different family members. Yeah. Um, but they're you know, willing and able to, to give the town a, a piece of property. We're still figuring out the actual plot, but it'll include the Stone House, which is the name that Beach called it, the Wedding Cottage. Do you have more to say about that? Uh, I guess the, uh, <clears throat> that was up there. This weekend, Bloomers. They, what they envision is is kind of a slice of property off Pine Hill Road, heading out through the field where the house sits, um, out to the house and past to the tree line, so that the room for a, a, a accessible path, the path from the road, um, well, from parking off the road actually to the stone house, and then room around it for fairly sizable gatherings if there were such a thing. Uh, but they wanted to maintain. Uh, a, a buffer, a fairly large buffer of land uh, in the field that's where the house sits to protect their privacy, protect their driveway. Uh, so they we kind of walked that out, worked that out. Uh, so the, the next step would be to get a uh, surveyor up there to find those lines uh, as a lot. Uh, so that's where we are with that. Uh, there are other steps ahead that that we need to take for all of this to come together, but knowing what steps to take depends on answers to certain questions that we're hoping you guys can answer for us. Um, so the the big one I think is the, P Peter sent you I think or sent to you all a, right. a perspective of sorts. So a lot of the background information about Archibald McLeish and Stonehouse and its importance in the town's history is, is in there. Um, so I guess we won't go over that again. But the, the, the information that I'm looking for to advance this project is, one, is this something that the select board um, feels has, you know, has, has merits, has, is worthy? Because if you guys are dead set against it for some reason, um, it's not going to happen because the, the concept so far is that we get to the town. Uh, there was an earlier effort, I'm sure you remember from last year, where um, GCC and the Franklin Land Trust were going to get the property and, and, and set it up as a, a, a museum space. Uh, that project fell through. And so the, the instigators came to historic groups in town and said, gee, would the town be interested in preserving this um, for posterity? And that's why it's, it's come to the Historic Society Commission uh, to pick up the ball and run with it. But we can't run very far unless the select board approves um, at the very least. And so that's, my my mind, the first thing in real why I want to come here tonight and talk is if you guys all think it's a crazy idea, but yeah, we shouldn't be investing a whole lot more time in this. Um, if you think the idea has merit, then I'm curious about um, how we proceed logistically with respect to the town and the approvals we might need um, or, or participation from the town. Whether to go to town meeting and ask for town approval. Now, someone has talked to, I think, the town council at some point in the early discussions of this so and we'll was told times. that technically because it's a gift that doesn't require spending tax dollars to to acquire this property that the selectmen on their own authority could uh, accept this gift and work out this lease to donate arrangement uh, on the other hand uh, some people have suggested well maybe the select board can can do that but perhaps it would make more sense to get uh, support from the town and town meeting for, for such an endeavor. So this is kind of where we, we, we are at with you guys. Uh, how, how do we proceed um, politically and legally to, to advance the project? Because I don't want to spend a lot of time working with bloomers if, uh, without knowing the steps that we need to go through. So that's 
So that was quite. Mm -hmm. I have thoughts on this, but I don't. I have, no. Yeah, I mean, my concern would be that if we accept this gift as, you know, we because op, we can do that as the select board. But what does that mean to the town going forward? I mean, if if we have, you know, now we own this property, so we're on the hook for a liability if there's an event there and someone, you know, falls down and breaks their ankle, or I mean, like. You know, it's, it's one thing to accept a gift, but this is a gift that's going to cost the town sure. money. And those are over the, kind of the questions yeah. that we would explore. I'm at the point where I don't want to go figuring those answers out yet. And just, you know, the support for this and which route we want to go. Because I can imagine, for example, going to a town meeting where the question is, you know, do you want to empower the select board to negotiate uh, at least to donate agreement? Uh, so the power, so they would, the committee might, the town, Town meeting might, in principle, approve the idea, and then leave you guys to work out the mechanics of it uh, to, to answer those kinds of questions. Right? Uh, Could you answer what is a lease to donate agreement? I mean, well, the, the, what the bloomers, what the bloomers have in mind, and I think this is sort of tied up in estate planning and so right. forth. But what they have in mind is that that they don't want to donate, give the town the property like today. They want to lease it to the town with like virtually no restrictions on what we can do with it. It would be as though we owned it and we could rehab the building, we could build the, the walkway, we could have events and all the things we do and enjoy, if we owned it. We would have the right to do uh, during this lease. And then the lease would convert to ownership uh, to the town when they left uh, left <laughs> one way or the other, you know, whether they moved away or whether they were to die, whatever, you know, one way or the other, that it would come to the town uh, ownership at that point. Uh, in the meantime, we could do whatever pretty much. The want. model that feels to me I'm, is, is, is the little schoolhouse that we have next to the ground. Yeah, I just even mentioned it's very and, and, and it feels a lot like that. Oh, yes. Uh, and I I don't hear anyone complaining about that, you know. It, and that was folded into the nice town's to insurance it. plan, I believe, yeah. and the mowing. Yeah. Um, contract. And I think it's worked out pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. The, the mowing has been by far the most expensive right. element. And this this won't need much mowing. Maybe once right. a year. So, so, I mean, the, the you know the, the getting it on the you know the, the town has is very well insured, um, mm -hmm. and the, the adding another small town thing you know to our liability policy isn't going to cost much, um, right. and. Um, uh, the the uh, the you know to to me like the 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 way that makes this like really work well is to set it up running with the, like the, instead of setting instead of setting it up and having it and then having to go hat in hand and whatever like with and to do that I I thought the CPA fund was the perfect place for this and that and that's the way it would come to town meeting through that as well yeah, that's the plan is to apply for and, and, I, and i just remember from i guess it's two years now it wasn't last one it was more, more less right. and um the gentleman that stood up and and asked for funding for this i i thought this is the only one of the only times i thought even though it lost the vote one but it lost that vote by one i think um i i thought oh, that that i thought that was yeah, I thought that was a demonstration of support for the project because that was an impossible year. That was peak pandemic. Um, right before him was was the article that made all town employees have a wage freeze, and and then he's at you know and then he's asking for money for historic preservation. And um, I I just yeah, that, 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 but, and and to lose by one vote it, in that that was that was. That's the that's the equivalent of a unanimous vote in a normal town meeting. I thought this um, time around, of course, the project's a lot more a lot cleaner. This is a donation. That's right. To the town. It's a town project. Yeah. Right. right. Historic society, historic commission, collaborating to sort of accept it and then uh, short up a little bit and, and use the you know, arrange for people to use it. Well, so that that seems like a cleaner proposition than than the, the Franklin Land Trust coming from the Conway yeah. town voters to keep their money. So this would be Conway organizations if we go to the CPA fund right. with solving the town. And that and and the other like the the schoolhouse. I, I thought the, the one of the advantages of that location, of course, is that there's always people looking after it and right. it's it's used right. in theory. Um, and uh, 
I think you used quite a bit. And, 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 and like the mowing is going there anyway, and for just include a little bit more isn't, uh, you know, that, that big of a deal. The, um, that, you know, so, but, and, and there's always new teachers. There's always, so every year there's like a new, it gets like new blood put into it. Um, and so, so what I worry about is in a place, not worry, but in, in a place on the top of the hill, you know, the, um, it depends on, the ultimate success depends on new blood right. you know, 10, 20 years down the line. Yep. And just how you use. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. The and working concept right now is that the historic commission as the official town entity would be the one sort of channeling the gifts and overseeing the the uh, rehab is too strong a word, but you know, repainting and, and repointing the, 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 the stonework and so forth, get it ship shape. And then to put in some parking, maybe two or three cars off street and a footpath, an accessible footpath um, up to the house. And then once that's all set up, the idea is that they would lateral to this historic society which would be responsible for the programming of it, if you will, you know, finding ways to use the building, to tie in school programs, perhaps to, you, to reach out to uh, local uh, poetry or literary organizations. To be open for the Festival of the Hills. Right, right. And then maybe Does it have any use like days. that now? Sure. Does it ever have any use like that now? No, no it's, I, a private, I, it's privately owned, it's been locked up. Very few people have been in in the last 30 years. You know, just, I, I think John Crowley, who's a global right. novelist, yeah. used it for a, a while, rented it, they, they used it for a while, yeah. slept up the hill and, uh -huh. and uh -huh. communed with Archibald Felicia's music. Right. He found some inspiration there. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, but no, other than that, it hasn't. And so that's the idea that, gee, we've got this, this place where we're arguably one of the most famous people who lived in, in Conway, yeah. uh, sat down every day and wrote this Pulitzer Prize stuff, Pulitzer Prize King stuff, and and uh, it just seems a shame to let it disintegrate. Yeah. It would be the only real sign of him in town that's left because the house has now been changed so dramatically. You wouldn't recognize it from when it was before, and so it really does become a memorial of him because it's a yeah. literary landmark that people can come visit. We would we would show it to people that are interested if they call us and say we really want to see that or we want to. I want to bring my grandparents who love McLeish to come see it. And we would have enough people around there. So and the, the, just the, the part about the financing and the money, like the right. way that actual money is dealt with. Right. So I looked into this too. Um, and because I think Sarah had asked about, you know, oh, we should have a revolving fund because that would make it, then you wouldn't have to involve town hall staff. Uh -huh. um, you know, with receipts, with you know each little receipt to get you know put in and put the whole the whole process for getting a Are bill paid. Are you talking about like maintenance of the property? Yeah, or, or but revolving accounts can only be established by town meeting. Um, so that's a, so that would have to be another at, um, and, and so there is there and there is no revolving account for the historical commission. And how did we um end up? Funding the schoolhouse. The purpose it was the money came into the society, right? And then Louise wrote checks yeah. to the contractors or whoever. Um, but somehow it went through the town too. I'm not sure how that was done then. So it must have gone into a town account at some point. Because it was a town property, the town was paying for it, but it was the society yeah. that was that was that was pre-jam raising the money. Pre-jam Warner. So I don't know how that was done there. There, there's sort of two two phases to this as well. The, initially, uh, there would need to be some money, money, private money, and and we hope Community Preservation Act money, um, and the CPA money would be used for for uh, repairing the roof, uh, building the, the parking and the pathway, doing some tree work around the building so that it doesn't get crushed, um, that sort of thing. Uh, and then there's some other private fundraising that Peter's actually begun or is about to begin that we envision uh, the society doing in good faith. So it's not all on tax base. Uh, and th that money initially is we're going to need to pay for things like a surveyor. It's going to have to create the subdivision, if you will, the lot. Um, we're going to need to pay the bloomer. We'd agreed to pay the bloomers legal fees because we didn't feel it was spared for them to have to pay a lawyer to give us some uh, you know, property. 
So there's some upfront costs that we'll have to we can uh, cover. And before the CPA, yeah. if they come in. So the historical society uh, under Peter's leadership has already begun that process of trying to reach out to people and, and get that money. You're forming a friends committee, primarily to fund friends. Does the historical commission own anything else like that? The historical commission? No. Well, well, or, or manage or uh, other than the schoolhouse, which is yeah. probably the closest now. Yeah. Right. And that was, yeah, the commission had a role to play in that, but it was really more the society. Right? It was the going on town on land. The problem, the society is a, a private organization, and in our mission, we're, we're not supposed to take on buildings and structures. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's pretty clear. Yeah. Um, so we'd have to make a pretty huge exception to do that. So it made more sense for the town to take it over. Mm -hmm. um, that it is that is the historical commission's bailiwick in general. Right. So once the property was acquired and, and fixed up, then the idea would be the commission would sort of hand off the functional use of it to the society. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, so if someone who organizes the annual uh, spoken word festival. Uh, in Franklin County, wanted to incorporate that as a site. Yeah, they would come to Peter or somebody on the society and say, "Hey, you can use that." So we say, "Yeah, I'd love to." So there's kind of a two two part partnership here uh, in in doing this work, uh, and the CPA money would be an important part. We imagine in, in doing the physical work that needs to get done. There's just so much good to say about keeping Archibald alive here at the town. Right. Yeah, and uh, during the fest, during the 250th, you know, he, his name was up a lot. Yeah. We showed a movie here a, a couple times, actually, uh, uh, that he made with PBS or whatever right. it was called back yeah. in those days. It's a shame we don't have a copy of that movie. Yeah. It's on GCC's website. It might be on YouTube, too. So, you know, yeah. Admittedly, he, unlike Marshall Field, our other most famous and successful person, uh, he wasn't born here. But he spent right. you know, 50 plus years of his professional productive life as yeah, a resident yeah. of a lot town. longer than much. Field. Yeah, that's right. Who <laughs> left town at age what, 17 or 18? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it, I keep running into people in town, and when I mention a project, a lot of them know that Beach was a writer, but they don't know much more than that. They don't, I mean, for some of them, we win three Pulitzer Prizes, we won an Academy Award, too, and a Tony Award. Um, and then all the major poetry prizes. I mean, it's a pretty incredible feat. And and involved in the uh, you know the FDR right. administration yeah. during World War II. Yeah, he worked after World War II. He was involved in some of the preliminary work that led to the creation of the CIA, for example. Yep, and he was involved in a lot of interesting stuff uh, in his time. And the people he knew when that came to Conway, it's just it's really mind-boggling to think of them. I think of Bob Dylan visiting in 1972. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they almost collaborated on some kind of play called Scratch. They just wanted Dylan to write the music for it. And Dylan said, no, I think Dylan recognized it wasn't a very strong play. It opened <laughs> on Broadway and closed after one night because the New York Times review was so negative. <laughs> and Paige wrote an angry letter to the Times complaining that they had too much power over plays on Broadway. Which they did. And do. They do, yeah. Um, so, getting back to my questions, I guess you know, the first thought was, should we proceed and, and what this proceeding look like? Do we go to a town meeting at some point and ask the town meeting to support this in principle and, and leave it to you and the historic commission to, to be the agents to work out an arrangement? Because the bloomers are sitting there ready to go. They've been, uh, unfortunately, you know, they worked with the land trust for a couple of years and then it went nowhere. And so they're a little frustrated by that. And so they're eager to, to tie this up you know, and, and donate this. this but you think we could approve it? I mean, yes, yeah, so, but like we could accept the gift at the select board, but I just, I'm. I'm the, little... the, so the, C, the uh, Community Preservation Commission is a separate committee that uh, that has to approve of the project to get it onto the to the warrant. You're talking about the money, the money, but, but in terms of accepting the property, that's saying that we yes. would accept the gift, right. but I yeah. could technically. And the question we, is whether you technically want and, and so so to, so to me, so I thought about this too, and and you know because this has already been at town meeting and and lost by one vote. Think to then have it be the response of the town. Okay, we're buying it. We're not um, buying. 
or yeah, leasing yeah, it. I, I know. Yeah. Um, sorry. Um, le lease to purchase. Acquire. Lease to purchase. Okay. Agreement. Lease to um, donate. There's no cost. Lease, to yes. Very good. They're going to give it yeah. to us. Cost of their lawyer. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. So I mean, technical if, jargon is off. Like if we were to accept this just choose to accept this gift what needs to be is there anything that needs to be put on the warrant uh, the cpa would the C, it would like the cpa money to like right. rehab the, right. the property but it's really a two-step the money yeah. is separate right. exactly so we could just say that we're going to accept this and then if you did that if you on your own said yes yeah, right then we, we, and now the town owns this property we're, and now we're willing to accept then we would well you could handle it however you want it but presumably we would continue talking to Boomers and we would, I presume, use our town council to talk to their lawyer and work out the lease, work out the agreement. Um, so everyone was happy that it allowed us to do what we want to do and that when they were to leave the scene, it would come to town in the form and, and shape that we want. Um, so there's some technical stuff that has to be worked out there. Uh, but if you gave us the permission, we'd go ahead and work that out. Right, so we, so we could accept agreement. Right, and we could accept this gift, and then you guys could go and like try to work out all the stuff, and then come back and we say, actually, yeah, we you, don't want it. Well, you wouldn't <laughs> you even. Your mind. I mean, like, well, you, you could. I mean, we reject. I mean, that, I guess that's my question: is like, is is there any risk to us right now saying we want to accept? If you say this is well, in principle, we we think this is a great idea. Yeah. And, and you, if you were to empower the historic commission um, as a town agent to negotiate with the bloomers to work out an agreement at lease, then we would go ahead and do that. And the, the, the risk would be that uh, there would be a, a legal bill, bill at the end of this process. You know, if you got the lease back and you, you looked at it, so oh, we can't sign this, it's a terrible lease. Uh, I doubt that would happen because the town attorney is going to be negotiating on our behalf, looking out for our interests. Um, by you know conceivably yes, and then then we'd be out uh, some money, for, money for legal fees. Yeah, so that's the you know and and <laughs> so I, you know the, the, the thing about like a formal vote to say go ahead and or or, or to to accept the gift before the town meeting votes on it is that you then risk run the risk of people getting upset that. We didn't respect the vote of the prior town meeting. Yeah. Well, that's so, political consideration you guys yeah. have. So, so does it make sense to go to town meeting and just ask for a vote? Not CPA, but no CPA as well, CPA, and then that's cut that, it yeah, and, via the and CPA. That's, right. so once we roll that into two, like we we the, vote to accept the gift and so you I mean it seems like there's two different things. There's yeah. two different questions. Yeah. If, if I may, I would just um suggest that. If, if the board does decide that, at least in principle, they wish to accept the gift, and, and I think that's what you're asking for, to then know that you're not wasting your time moving forward, yeah. I would recommend that um, there's a developed a budget as something that lets you know how much money you're getting into, both for the initial rehab and then for the long-term maintenance. Because those are things that if that comes up at town meeting, they're going to want to know. You know, what are we what will be happening in the future with this? Well, if we're putting in for a CPA money, it's going to be a very tight budget. We're going to have all the figures laid out. Right, but that would be for the initial rehab, correct? Right. Well, it could so, be no, it, no, it would be setting, like I, I thought that it would be setting up for for the future as well. Um, well not, we're going to raise some private money too, which could go into a pool just for maintenance and future the needs. And, the, and this is a question maybe the town attorney, but um, I was led to believe that the CK money was not appropriate for long-term maintenance or upkeep, but rather for the initial historic rehab. I don't know that that's true. If it's not true, then theoretically we could ask for more money than we need initially, and you take what's left over and put it in that revolving account to be drawn on in the future. Uh, Whether CPA money can be used for operating expenses for future. I yeah, and that I, I can't give the I, answer I to that, but Mike. No, either. Mike, and, and if it weren't, as we discussed these things, the thought was okay, if legally you can't do that, you can't put some CPA money in the account somewhere and draw on it over time, then the thought was that the historic society would try to do some more private fundraising and, in essence, endow it, if you will, uh, so that that money could be kept. In, by the town and use as needed to repaint the windows 25 years from now or reshingle the roof. 
30 years from now or whatever. The maintenance costs are going to be very low. It's a stone house, not a whole lot. <laughs> we, we spend CPA money. I mean, we spend CPA money to redo the cupola. You know, right. Here. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it, it's used for maintenance. Generally speaking, the, the CPA money is used custom made for this kind of project. Right. Yeah. right. Stored yeah. project. Yeah. And, and it's a physical thing that we can fix up. And, and, but but I mean, you use the word in principle a lot of times, which, which is hedging a bit. And, you know, I mean, it sounds like you're asking, would we, are we authorizing you to pursue this further? You know, I mean, At a minimum, we're, sure. we haven't, we're, we're not signing anything to yeah, this. Yeah, like, like, like we have to take yeah. a formal vote saying that we as a select board support accepting the gifts of the stone cottage. Or do we just, I mean, do we have to formally I mean, vote on that? We said we could support it based upon, you know, a future town approval. In, in, you know, in the town and, and that's assuming a but again, you said you look into it, but there's this two step process because conceivably, it sounds like legally you had the authority at some point to sign a lease and accept this, this property. I agree with that statement. Yeah. Right. That's true. Yeah. Politically, however, you know, you also could choose a different path. You could choose to put the question before town meeting voters um, and ask them uh, to empower you to negotiate such a lease and agreement, you know, that, that where they would be asked in principle to approve the concept and work out, let you work out the details. The details being a, an agreement that we hand you at some point. I, mean, I think we're all in agreement that yeah. this is a great thing, yeah. and that you, and that it's wonderful that you want to do this. And, and I'm not sure what vote we need to take to empower you to do that. But it's just, uh, I think uh, the CPA will will will, um, will recommend it if they recommended it before. Right. They'll recommend it again. And I, I recall that the ask at C from CPA then was fifty thousand. Yeah, and, the numbers are going to change. And I, I mean, but. And that's, you know, which isn't even, that's two thirds of the interest that they made last year on the CPA money. Yeah. So, and, you know, and that's probably the high end because okay. some, I'm assuming, I'm kind of hoping that some of this work can be done by volunteers. So, for example, um, Conway Mason, and Charlie Marsh has already volunteered to do the stonework that needs to be done. Nice. Um, and, and uh, yeah. And there's other people perhaps who, paint and, and slather some new coat and sign. Right. Has happened with the schoolhouse. Right. So you have a lot of people to help. Carl, yeah. Carl will help. Carl Baker. So right. Well, he's yeah, going right. to be up there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and then just the, 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 the and then you know the, the more the less it like imposes on the daily operating existence of current town employees with their current workloads. Right. Um, the better it is generally for like the town and and so and. <laughs> Um, the less that you ask of people from from the, their assessment from their taxes directly instead of like CPA right. money, then well, the better it is. Being as well. redundant, I think there's two questions I like to come away with. One is someone needs to say yes, this is a good idea in principle. Work out the lease. And do we have to take a formal vote? And then we'll look that? at the lease and make right. a final decision. Right. Yeah. It's That's hard for basis. us to go forward without some. Because you, we're going to be using town council to make this decision. Yes, I, that would be my next step would be to call the town attorney and say, okay, I need you to talk to their lawyer right. and work this out. But we're probably talking a couple thousand dollars. Or, I know or, on their side, so that's right, we're paying, that's right. on their side, they're thinking probably 1500 bucks to do whatever's involved. Okay. But still, that's, yeah. yeah. No, we don't, we wouldn't be paying that amount. Yeah. So, but, um, we will, well, the historic societies. Right. We will, we will absorb that if the whole thing falls apart too. Society right. so I think it's, I mean, yeah. it's a no brainer. <laughs> Good. Okay. Go for it. I think it'll be a great thing for the town. And um, a lot of people will learn about the leash. You know, there'll, there'll, yeah. there'll be some press going along with this as we get farther along. And the, and the property taxes on that thing right now were like $80 a year or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> it's just a piece of the bigger yeah. parcel. I, I think I remember trying to to, to sit. I, I was like, it's, it, it was. I think it was under a hundred dollars a year. Yeah. So, uh, what are you doing? No more property. So days. if we, I'd say, I think I hear you guys saying yes. Go ahead. Yeah. So we agree with this. Yeah. Use the town attorney. Work out an agreement. So, so in general, you, we try not to have people talk directly with the town attorney. Or we, you want we, to we have our admin 
talk to the town attorney yeah, and sure. it just but the idea that, that we could use the town attorney services yeah. to, to represent yeah. the town in this yeah. negotiation. Yes. Um, and then when that's done, we come back with an agreement that the town council presumably has said is good. And you all would be the ones who say, yeah, this is great. It's fine. And then we put that on the warrant for next town meeting, right? So would that be the, uh, the town meeting that potentially is in the fall or the annual town meeting in May? We have one. We, we, um, we're still, get, you know, this, so th th this would be something for the fall, for a fall town meeting. And there is, it's a, there was a couple other things, maybe. Um, but that's a whole note because if you're the, you know, any any 25 people can sign for and, and create their right. a, a town meeting. But, but if it's not something but else you will hear know. how that cost the town 800, 500, whatever dollars in postage and, and people, and I'm told that they have taken that out on the poor applicants in the past. Well, this is um, your call. Because, but from our point of view, we just need to know what the target yeah. date is. Right. So I know what the target I'm working for. And we can put together a CBA application mm -hmm. pretty quickly, I think, once we get. Yeah, because we've already been putting yeah, together right. numbers about what, well, first, what needs to be done to shore up the building and make it good for the next decades, and then how much is that going to cost, and who can do the work. And, you know, that's already starting to come together. The hope would be that whatever date the town meeting might be where we ask for CPA money or, or the town's blessing, uh, generally, that we would have a, a real specific proposal of real perspectives you know this is how much money it's going to require to do various things why do you think the fall is more appropriate just it sooner or it's sooner oh, uh, that, i mean there is that There's something shovel ready then yeah. you shovel away you know um so but yeah uh, yeah so, so i mean and that's but i there was there was it was going to be something that i we'll have to look into whether this is the only meeting, thing huh? that I have heard of the potential yeah. for a fall meeting. Kind of so, yeah. did you, well, you, you, did you like us to vote? Is, is that, I mean, uh, uh, well, we don't have I, I think you showed her nothing, just yeah. did, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 we just did. Yeah. I think that's enough for us to work on and go back to the boomers and say, let's yeah. move to the next stage. If, if get the, get if the attorneys together. If it doesn't happen until next June's town meeting, how? How would it impact your project? Well, yeah, we would just have to wait. Uh, yeah. yeah, the numbers would go up, I guess. They'll go down. Oh, yeah, the lumber might yeah, go down. The material costs have changed dramatically. Yeah, yeah. Sooner the better, I suppose. But, but yeah. we know the bloomers really want to have this off their plate because they've been dealing with it for a long time and they would like to see it finalized. But they're not, they're willing to wait. They haven't set a deadline. Uh -huh. right. um, I think they somewhat tongue in cheek said they're not getting any younger. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's that. But uh, yeah. I mean, if you had no other reason to schedule a special town meeting in, in November, right, for yeah. example. There's been one almost every year the last few years. Right? Yes. Yeah. But if you did schedule yeah, it, yeah. we, no, and, sure. and we knew about it soon enough. Hopefully, we can put together a proposal uh, for CPA money with a budget behind it, right. explaining what the money would be for. Well, the, the bylaw is first Saturday in June, is our town meeting now. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's still months of stuff. Where, you know, it's just, you're just getting it to, in and out of the CPA committee takes time. Right. They're not, yeah. They only meet as needed. Yeah. Right. Although they've already seen this proposal previously. That's right? true. So I don't yeah. know that it would take really a whole lot of time. Get their vote. Mm -hmm. um, we definitely are going to raise some private funds. I, I would think you know, at least several thousand dollars to offset the CBA grant, um, but also have a pool of money to use in the future too. If we need to Good. I hope so. Yep. And, and there's people in town who have already told me they'd like to donate money to that. Oh, good. Good. Right. So we've got your blessing to go ahead. Yeah. Good and work out of these make permission to use the town attorney services coordinated through the administrators and uh, we'll continue developing the prospectus and raising money right. on our own to cover the board and let's try to make it happen yeah and the hope would be we'd come back at some point with a, with a, a lease agreement uh, and you all would know if this would be another special town meeting sooner than june yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. That's
concur. Right. So that would have to be decided relatively soon, right? Yeah. yeah. Did you, did, you all, did you all see the maps? Yeah. yeah, I see the old one. Not the new, there is a new this one. is just a little sketch for Peter Jeswell. There's a path still in fire. Um, put together. It's going to be on our friends committee to help us with that. Right. I don't know if you can scope that out just by looking at it, but it's, it just shows the, the little stone house at the top of Pine Hill. And he's, he's sketched in a, a parking space with two different cars. Um, and a path that snakes its way along the stone wall to the stone house. So is it visible from that bend in the road? Yeah. Huh. Bend. I know yeah, it depends on how tall the grass is. Right. Uh, well, you can but the, the bloomer's concern was that the property that, they, that went with the stone house would be such that they wouldn't, how did they put it? They don't want to see using the stone house. Right. Mm -hmm. So they want a bit of a buffer. And I told them that I would screen all the Japanese tour buses. <laughs> sure. So they don't have to worry about that. All right. Great. Good. Thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for doing it. Uh, seven o'clock. Uh, good evening. Yeah. Thank you. Beth is here. Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership Update. Yes, I'm here. Hi. Hi, Beth. Hi. Um, how's everybody? So I'm going to try to keep this brief. Can you all, am, am I coming through clearly? In? Yep, we hear you okay. well. Okay, so um, I'm just here to, to give you a brief update about what's going on with the Mohawk Trail Woodland Partnership Project. I'm your I'm your current Conway representative, and somehow I became also chair of the Education Outreach and Research Subcommittee of the Mohawk Trail Woodland Partnership. When we became less of a um, project being run, you know, and supported by the Franklin Regional Council of Governments and the Berkshire um, Council of Governments, and we became our own entity. So I I'm still there. <laughs> I just want to say at the top of this report that um, I am planning and hoping that by next year at this time, there'll be someone else in this position. So what? putting that out there. Not allowed. <laughs> Not allowed. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, okay. So um, right now, um, if you go to the Mohawk Trail Woodland Partnership Project website, it's fairly uh, out of date and does isn't isn't reflective of uh, a lot of the work that we're doing. We are um, working on updating the website. That's one of the things. We are uh, committed to updating the strategic, the strategic plan for the program. Um, so let me just run you through our fall 2020 projects. Um, there's gonna be a September webinar, I think on the 14th of September on the previous grant projects. It's possible that um, Lisa Hayden, who's our administrative agent, contacted Phil about that, about talking about that. I don't know. I gave I gave her your name, Phil. Sorry. So it was about some of the previously funded grants. Um, and that's both a promotion and publicity effort, as well as a way that they want to talk about what's possible for municipalities, what they can do with some grant funds. Um, there's going to be a Williams College course starting this fall. So our, the chair of the Mohawk Trail project is um, Hank Art, and he's a Williams College professor. And he often brings students in to uh, do some really cool projects. And that's one of the ways the carbon sequestration project got started, actually, to tell you the truth. Um, so the Williams College course is, to, I'm quoting from them, to create conceptual programmatic design possibilities, explore geographic siting opportunities, and provide alternatives analysis to help the MTWP further plan for an eventual Mohawk Trail Forest Center located somewhere within the partnership region. That's a big, that's a big hope for the for the project that there'd be this, this um, sustainable forestry center that would be useful for landowners as well as um, interested tourists, things like, and businesses, things like that. Um, 
We are committed to listening sessions to gather input from regional landowners, municipalities, and businesses for a plan update. I don't know how that's going to happen. We had initially thought they were going to be like in person. I don't know what's happening for that. Um, I already mentioned the new website. Um, there's a there's a push to meet with local legislators on a regular basis. Um, we have to continue seeking funding for the project because after a little while we won't have any more funding because it's state funded and um, building partnerships and seeking donations. Our current state funding, I think is not beyond FY 2022 at this point. Um, we, I, um, I'm one of the people planning a December seminar on oak trees, which initially I was hoping would be in person at uh, two regional high schools, one in the Berkshires and one in Franklin County, um, but it might wind up being on Zoom. So the objectives of the seminar is to share information with the public and local woodland landowners about the current threats to oak trees in our forests and a range of management approaches for fostering oak resilience. So that's where we're at with the Mohawk Trail. We've got a lot of um, people on various committees working hard, but right now there's not a whole lot of like public obvious stuff getting done. So I thought it'd be useful for you to understand some of the behind the scenes things. Do you have any questions? Are more or, towns joining? Are more towns joining? Um, well, right now, if you look at the website, you can see the potential towns that are part of the region that are designated as the region. I think that Shelburne didn't join at their last uh, town meeting. So there's 21 towns right now in it. But after a while, you, you can't, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure legislatively how many more towns can join actually after a certain point. Um, so there's 21 towns sorry. that have joined or that could join? No, there's 21 towns that have joined. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. And there were something like 28 that could join. Yeah. But I think that um, uh, Shelburne, it was either Shelburne or Buckland, I'm really sorry that I, that I blanked on which one it was at their town meeting did not vote didn't voted not did not vote to join the partnership they have some very serious opposition in some of the um other towns a lot of the towns when you look at the map are um in the berkshires and so far the opposition that's been popping up is mostly in franklin county which is yeah, I, I believe on a misconception of what the partnership is all about. Um, that's totally. my personal belief that that's what it is um, because the arguments are often not what we're seeking to do, but that's it's, it's a hard thing to, to um, combat because we have very little public presence at the moment. So, so I'm, I'm hoping that like a seminar or something for a free like seminar on something like Oak you know, the importance of oaks in the landscape, both in the forests and in people's like own personal, you know, smaller uh, landscapes and for municipalities um, might be helpful to get some interest in the, in the partnership and some of the things that we're most concerned with. <laughs> so. So I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of the uh, Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership, I think it's demonstrably helped our town out quite a bit um, belonging in it. And I think you're doing an amazing job. Um, but the, I, I, and just, just so people know that the, my, my, my big pride and joy in this is the, the current MV, MTWP grant project is from, I guess it was funded last year, but we got a one-year extension. If you didn't know, we got a one-year extension to keep doing the work. Um, and um and and that, so the carbon Conway's carbon its credit market feasibility study was it is currently ongoing and is funded by this and it is and it is you know we 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 are currently still talking with with people all throughout town where we've had over a hundred contacts about forest issues sitting down in living rooms. Um, 
I would say that's due to you, Phil, not to not to me or the partnership. Well, that's my whole point because <laughs> because in this case, like this is going to be that twenty thousand dollars is going to be leveraged for for tremendous gain for not I mean, what we're doing a, an aggregate between private landowners and the town forest nobody's done before, and I love it. Um, <laughs> and 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 we've set up we've set up all these processes now to do this with people and and to yeah. get people from all non part all across the board yeah um, it's, yeah i i and, and it's I, happening we've determined it's feasible like way early and we're and now now we're way over the 1500 acre uh, minimum um aggregate amount we're way over it this and, is so good um, so, somebody should contact you to talk about this on september 14th i can't uh, believe they have to talk to you already so that's a pretty good segue unless someone has other questions or comments about about the partnership it's a segue to what i was hoping to also just just bring up about our sustainable forestry plan that was developed as as a grant is that okay for me to just bring that up briefly yeah, yeah. so one of the things about this sustainable forestry practices recommendations is they're not going to do themselves you know these are a series of like um couple of year long projects. There's a number of them. There's about like, I don't know. I had, um, I asked um, Louise, I think printed out uh, pages 32 and 33 of the plan for you all to look at, which is the list of table three. It's just a list of some suggested things to do. But all these suggested things to do cost money. They're not free. Even if some of the work was done by volunteers in town, it's not a free thing. So I'm I'm just coming to you all to ask if you would consider um, spending some money on this to get to get this sustainable forestry management plan going. Um, for me, the top three things to do relatively soon is invasive plant control. Um, the creation of young forest patches, which is just a one to two acre cut or a widening of an existing cut, and then um, native shrub planting in the around the wetland areas. So um, that's what I think, but I'm just me. So I, I'm, you know, I'm bringing it up with you guys because I think there's some funds maybe that are somewhere in some sequestered area because they were from logging of the forest, of the Fournier forest. So I don't know if that still exists or not, but it makes sense to me if we do have funds that are somehow um, still trackable from that initial logging, then wouldn't it make sense to spend the money on the forestry planning and management? Yeah, I think when, and when Joe, we have, to, we have to hire a forester to do this. I know, I know Joe knows the answer to that question too. Does he? That yeah, he does. Fun. I guarantee he does. I'm cute, Joe. Um, so that's my pitch. That's all I have to say about it. Um, I'm happy to talk further about it with anybody, but again, I'm not a forester, but I, I, I do know that you have to, you know, spend the money to make this happen. And I have no idea how much it would be, but this is a relatively small piece of land, the Fournier Forest. I'm not speaking about the other one, Cricket Hill. I think there's plenty to be done there too, but um, this is this is what I'm just bringing up with you today. So, so we have a new forestry committee that's gotten formed. We have a forest and trails committee. Yes, Marilyn and Deb, I think Marilyn's here right now. Yeah, Hi, Marilyn. Yeah. Yeah, we took a walk in the Fournier Forest together so I could show them some of the things that I thought was cool and important. Great. Yeah, great. <laughs> yeah. I would have liked to have gone on that walk. Another I time. Need, I need yeah. to know what's nice and important too. <laughs> sure, another time. There's, there's plenty to do in there, especially access to it because access to it is very difficult right now because it's right behind the highway garage. So there's a lot of things in the way. Um, and Marilyn, I'm sure, can speak to that at some point. <laughs> Giant hunks of metal. I mean, if, if, if there's any trail grants to be gotten, 
eventually from Mohawk Trail Woodland Partnership. I'd love for us to apply. I'll, I'll certainly bring those to the attention of the select board. Yeah, um, I, I, I'd like to know about that too, because I, I, um, I, I just remember Mary Wigmore's suggestion for that plat, the raised platform, the trail uh, for the, the yeah. overlook. And, yeah. and I, that would be amazing if we could do that. There's a lot of cool things, and um, right now, um, right now we don't we don't have specific grants. The Mohawk Trail project doesn't have specific grants right now, but it's expected. So as they come out and are announced, I will definitely inform you all of that, and the, I'll inform the Forest and Trails Committee too, of course. Good. Yeah. Good. I yeah, you know, these, these else? are things, and, and and you know, these are things worth funding. I mean, it's yes, so, yeah, I, sure. <laughs> I mean, we went to the trouble of having a plan developed. Yeah, let's use this very realistic and wonderful plan. Yeah, and we have we we have we, more we have more and more foresters moving into town too. That's good. Maybe some of them are private foresters, and we could hire them. They are. They are. Okay, cool. So that's all I have to talk about tonight. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Thanks, Beth. Okay, we're good? Yeah, right. yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah. I'm thanks. leaving. Bye. Okay. All right. Um. All right, so the last item on new business is the draft the, uh, is the host community agreement review and approval. So we have people waiting, but it's for an executive session. Um, so uh, so this is the last item in the agenda really to take care of before that. So it, it is an 11 page agreement now. Um, I just wanna talk about it briefly because we have, there, the reason that this came about now, even though I've want, you know, I, I want, I haven't been satisfied with our old one since uh, since it was battle tested, as they say, and it re and it revealed, you know, that it revealed some weaknesses, I thought. And um, so specifically the ability to audit. So if we're going to do a, 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 a community impact fee, um, then, you know, the, we have to we have to have an audit procedure and penalties and whatnot um, so, so that you know, so that we can be sure that you know, we're not just uh, not us, but an account on our behalf. And then um, uh, there was a few other things that uh, uh, items about winding down the business and, and making sure that it's done properly and you know, to treat it like, you know, it, uh, with, you know, for it will require a, a, a bond in the, from the very beginning, mm -hmm. you know, and um, so that so do we, we currently have a host community agreement have, and this is a, we have a host community agreement that i believe was like just a few pages long okay. and, and so this um, is a proposal to amend so, so this is a proposal actually it's not amending we actually just ditched our complete our, our old one completely and went all new okay um so the existing establishments who are already abiding by the original they, they are grandfathered but okay. um but if these all have a five-year term so um so when those are up which is two years from now i believe um so then, 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 this, then, then this would okay right. what, what would be the basis for them to continue um but it has them doing mandating uh, volunteering for community service it has them uh how do you enforce that you know you, you don't but they're signing on it and they do it uh, you know um uh, late payment penalties that the accounting, you know, how that's going to work. Um, and this is one that this is basically what Deerfield is using, or well, uh, uh, I mean, this is this is like so, you so yes, this your thought. This uh, is I did model. not, I did not okay. reinvent this particular wheel, no. Um, and and uh, the other, other towns that have used this, um, have had it, uh, tested in court, I believe. So, or had an item, there was somebody, I think that applied for it, paid their application fee, and then never went through and wanted the application feedback. And this says, once you pay your application fee, it's non-refundable. Um, and so, uh, uh, yeah. 
Yeah. So for, for a whole lot of reasons, I thought it was a big, big improvement and we really needed an improvement because there's some there's some real sharp operators in this space right now. And it's gotten all hedge fundy and corporate -y and um, so right now, what is our what is our current because this one says that the but is it two percent of gross receipts? Yes, yeah, so I think right now ours was a sliding scale of one point five down to one. And um, but we didn't have the language that was necessary. See, so after we did our previous one, there was court cases that and actually like criminal cases against their, the, a mayor that used this to extort businesses and get like free oh, trips and, yeah. like, and all that. No, I remember and, that. and so they, they, they made a, a, there was a court case that said that, that, that the expense, that the community impact fee has to be based on uh, actual expenses. And so this has a clause about that whole language. And the, the problem with all that is that we are, we don't have a, a time clock next to, or, or a little, you know, uh, customer account number, like next to every second, you know, every minute that our employees spend, like, right. like a lawyer or a doctor would. And, and so we can't, we can't actually ever come up to an accurate statement about what the town's costs are to do anything. It's, um, so is this more apt to attract people or less apt? I mean, not that we've attracted. Yeah, I uh, um, definitely not a I, dispenser. I mean, it, it would presumably be less apt, and that's okay. I you know, because um, it, and it's all negotiable too. So, but but I, it it it's very protective, and we needed to be protected more. I thought as a town. And that, um, oh, it can. Yeah. Can. So that's it. Okay. So, um, so if that's okay with everybody, we can approve it and send it out. I'm willing to make a motion that we accept this as our new committee. Okay. okay. When you say we send it out, like who do we send it so out? So you send up. So people, people, uh, people contact the town and they say they're interested in. A, a cannabis operation, would you please send out a post community agreement? And that's the initial step. That's that's where you get to find out where it's going. Um, so, I mean, is, is this 2% just arbitrary? Why not like two and a half? I mean, you said uh, so, we had to so like one the and one large, So the Deerfield, uh, other town, most other large towns are all at 3%. Okay, and sorry. because we don't have a sewer, um, and I actually kept the sewer clause in I there yeah, and just said, like, you know, they anticipate <laughs> hooking up the sewer when and if said services are available. EPA um, reports but, filed to the sewer department. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but, but you know, this, so, so we don't have a lot. So, that, you know, the mandatory water test that would have to take place under all those circumstances, we don't have a lot of that. And so, so our, our costs that we charge should reflect that we don't have much government. Um, so are we currently getting 2% from any cultivators? On the cultivate, so this year, I, this, I don't know if they ever got a crop in the ground this year. I don't know how that worked out with the planning board the or whatever. Yeah, we're, um, yeah, it, there hasn't been any marijuana grown. Well, yeah, I know, that's I know. What, yeah, I mean, is I know that we one? have like, I mean, someone has a license, but, yes. but, but as far as yeah. I know, like there's no. I don't know the status of that. There's people on the call when we when we do the uh, the planning board people would know the status of that better than we would. Right. But um, I, I, once they want once they work with them first dollar that they receive. Right. So we haven't received any dollars so no, far. Not any, not that I know of, and that's part. That. You know, we don't have an audit procedure okay. in the current one, so that's part of it. So a motion was made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Was it seconded? Did I, I, I seconded. Think. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. No. I, think. I, I made a motion <laughs> to second. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. I have some second thoughts. Well, I mean, I, I didn't see the part of us. I mean, no, I, the audit piece. I want to. Oh, oh, accounting and review. Yeah, 
Yeah, okay, bye. Okay, unanimous. And um, if you would keep me remaining a while now, I don't know. If, um, well, you do have one last agenda to open meeting. The Board of Health accepting gifts. Oh, we didn't get all the way through that. I crossed it out already. So, um, I move that we allow Board of Health to accept gifts to support <laughs> the um, the transfer or the spot shop. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Announcement Festival of the Hills Road Race and Bake Sale, October 3rd. Items not anticipated 48 hours. No town administrator. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Select board comments, concerns. You know, next meeting. Okay, so we are a, we are going to be adjourning to go into executive session and then adjourning directly out of executive session. Um, uh, and we're going into executive session for reason statutory reason number six to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property if the chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body. And I, so, I do so declare. Um, and, uh, and the other thing that we do need to state is that that is for the, the, is the property that is 69 Main Street. And that is the reason we are about to go into executive session and adjourn this meeting directly from there. Great. With that, the camera, the recording should stop. So I move to um, adjourn the select board meeting of August, what is this, 30th? August 30th. Yes. I said it. All in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you.